Hey everybody, it's episode 391 of PodQuest. Hey, what's up? It's Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. I am Chris, with me is Walnut. Hello. Drew's not here, and it was painfully obvious with that lackluster woe from you. Was 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 my was my hello not all that lo- very lackluster? Do, yeah, do, you, I need, do we need do we need you, to redo it? You, we... you didn't feel like you meant it. Uh, I mean, I I did a little bit, maybe, maybe. I don't I don't believe you. I don't believe you at uh, all. But no, it's actually uh, there was something uh, that they showed uh, on the direct, which we'll get to later. That I want to bring up, and I can't remember what it was. Well, then we can't. We're in the montage. More well, so we're not going to bring it up then if you can't remember what it was. Well, that's that's why I was like, oh, I should figure out what that was. Um, but it was it looked really cool. But I don't know if anybody's going to have the montage game, so I might just have to watch that again real quick into the montage. This fucking guy. Uh. Well, I guess we might as well just jump into things then. What's what's the agenda tonight, Richard? The agenda for tonight is there we go. Uh, obviously, the Nintendo Direct that literally just ended, like maybe a half hour ago. Uh, uh, me and Cobb both played some more Pokemon Ar- uh, Legends Arceus or Arceus, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, I actually played Ori in the Blind Forest, and I want to talk about that. And you. Cobb, you watched some show with some title that's really long and stupid. You need to read it. Um, it's 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 the woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. I've Thank heard you. of it. I've never actually watched it. And then, um, Cobb, you, I guess you also watched the uh, Sword Art Online movie. If if we've got the time, we'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, one of the movies because there's been a bunch of them. I watched Ordinal Scale, which takes place between seasons two and three. And then I also watched Nightmare Alley. If we have oh, time, nice. Yeah, but I guess uh. That Nintendo Direct that just happened. Yeah, that was that was a that was honestly not bad, not bad. I thought it had some decent stuff in there. Hey, it was it was, it was all right. It had a couple things. I'm just like, oh, that's that's cool. Well, yeah, I mean, there was like spectacular or like uh like like mind blowing. Um, oh, there's the game that I was looking for. I just gotta let it load up. Uh, there wasn't like anything super spectacular, mind blowing. I mean, the new uh, Xenoblade. At the very end that they showed, yeah, that that one I'm I'm excited for because um, I I really enjoyed Xenoblade Chronicles two, um, and I actually have Xenoblade Chronicles. I got it for Christmas. I just I haven't started it yet because I had like I had finished Judgment and then Pokemon came out, but um, Xenoblade's going to be like the next thing I go to on the Switch after I finish Pokemon up. Yeah, uh, let's. See. I'm trying to remember like what they showed early on. What was it? there was what was the first thing they showed. Oh, uh, Fire Emblem Warriors that yep. takes place in the same realm or world as uh, Three Houses. Yeah, so it's Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes is what it's being yep. called, and yeah, yes. it's it's a new Muso game uh, in Fire Emblem. It's it's the second one of these Fire Emblem Warriors games, mm-hmm. um, and it's going to be the Three Houses characters are going to be playable in it. Yeah, which I really um, like the Three Houses characters, but like we've been over it a million times. Like the Muso style just is not for me. I I'm I. I, obviously, I like the Mozo song. I, li- I liked uh, Hyrule Warriors for the most part. It was just way too long. Like that, my biggest complaint is Hyrule Warriors. It's just too long. Um, it had like seven different endings, and so I like I I'm I'm intrigued in this one. Uh, I kind of want to get Fire Emblem Three Houses and play that before I get this, but I don't probably don't need both. Um, yeah, because I don't. So the the Fire Emblem games are not like the Hyrule Warriors, where like. The Age of Calamity tied into like a narrative around Breath of the Wild. Those games yeah. are usually just totally separate. Um, yeah. I would say though, Fire Emblem Three Houses, very good game. If you like the the kind of mm-hmm. strategy light that the Fire Emblem games have become, um, it's very good for that. Oh yeah, for sure. It's I I, I love those strategy type games. That's why I'm also kind of holding out for um, uh, Triangle Strategy, which I, that's such a stupid name. Yeah, right. I'm just I I'm hoping that game doesn't end up being just the same thing as Octopath Traveler, where there's no real narrative. It's just no, a bunch it's... of unconnected stories that you just happen to be able to play as it's... all the same characters in. It's not gonna be. It's gonna be a full on storyline. Like they have a main protagonist. There. They even said like the ma- follow the main protagonist in there. Blah blah blah. I can't remember what the the name of the main protagonist. Is. Yeah, but, same. Um, and I demo. I didn't. They're actually. Did... Did they show anything for that today? I they, may have missed it if they did. They did. They showed a little bit of it. I can't remember what it was in between. They showed a little bit and talked a little bit about it. And uh, good news is March 4th, they are dropping a new demo for it. 
that'll let you play through chapters one, two, and three, and your save will carry over to full version. Oh, nice. I like what I like when they do that with demos. Like anyone. Yeah. When you have yeah. a demo that it then it's just the beginning of the game and your content carries over because I don't want to play the same shit over again two months later, and I don't want to get dropped into hour 40 of a 90-hour game with all the abilities and be like, oh, cool, it looks like I can do a lot of stuff, but there was 40 hours of getting to know this shit that I didn't get to do. (laughs) Yeah, and that's, that's like, that was our, one of our biggest problems with the original demo when they, when it was still Project Triangle Strategy, was that the demo just throws you into it, and there's so much dialogue in this demo that you're just like, you don't care. Yeah, you really exactly. don't care, because it's, it's like, it had to have been, like, midway through, or at least maybe chapter three. Like, it had to have been pretty, like, a decent track into it, to where, I'm, like... It could have been early, and it's just, there was nothing to set up what we were doing. Plus, with demo, yeah. like we were just saying, with demos, if, if, if it's not carrying into the main game, paying attention to the narrative in a demo is absolutely exactly. useless. Exactly. So this'll, this'll, like, actually push me more to give it a shot. I might uh, try it out when it releases on stream or something like that. Um, I'm also excited to, for the uh, Front Mission remakes for uh, 1 and 2. I never played uh, any of those, so I don't really I, have any like nostalgia for them or not, but like it's I, cool that they're making them. I think I played one of them. I can't remember what it I don't even think it was 1 or 2. It was like one of the later ones, but I'm, I'm just a sucker for mechs uh, and, and giant monsters and stuff, so... Yeah, and I know like a couple of like a couple other small things that they they showed just to kind of like mention them. Uh, we saw a little bit more of the Advance Wars reboot. Yeah, Advance Wars one and two or whatever it's called. Yep. Uh, they one, por- one plus two. Yeah. Both Portal games are going to release on the Switch this year. Um, yep. Uh, Force Awakens. Yeah, Force Awakens is coming to Switch. Uh, MLB the Show, which I forgot had been announced previously, but that's still weird. Uh, no Man's Sky. Uh, Clona. I, I think I say that right, is like an old, like, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 mascot platform character. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even uh, there was a, a Gundam game. I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was an SD, yeah, it was the SD Gundam game, which yeah. I was super excited when I saw the Gundams, and then I, like, focused and realized it was, like, SD Gundam. I'm like, oh, eh, well, at least Gundam's getting a little, like, front and center notoriety. Mm-hmm. Uh. What else did we have in here, though? I'm just kind of scrolling through a list of stuff. Uh, Chrono Cross Remaster coming. That's that's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and we 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 haven't even talked about one of the biggest biggest announcements. I was I was trying to look at the uh, the small stuff real quick first because I figured we might yeah. spend a little bit of time on the bigger ones. Uh, so there was a Metal Gear Solid version of Splatoon Three with the new Salmon Run. Well, yes, yeah. So it's uh, it's a co-op mode. It's like a PVE co-op mode. Yeah, this, um, Salmon Run is their like horde mode. Okay, I've never I've never seen it played. I've any time I've ever seen a Splatoon two, which is one of the esports like in an esports style. I actually really enjoy watching Splatoon like in a tournament style. I, that's very fun to watch. I'm probably going to be terrible at it, which is why I've never played it. Um, so Splatoon, so I've actually never played sa- the Salmon Run mode, but it is essentially their horde mode. Yeah. Um, regular like Splatoon though, um, it is actually a lot of fun and. It's very easy, like, it It honestly isn't about, like, good and bad in that game, because, like most Nintendo games that have online, you don't really get matched up with people with, like, you're not voice chatting with these people, like, it's all random, it's quick matches, and Splatoon is, is it's, you're not taking each other out, necessarily. Like, yes, you can mm-hmm. shoot, like, your paint at the other players, but yeah. you're just trying to paint the, the, the level, whatever your team's color is. And there's like two or three other people on your team, so you know it's a team effort. It's, um, it's not. It's not just that. There's like there's there's like different game modes, and it's not just. Yeah, one of the modes is just painting the level, but there are there is like a basketball type mode, and there's um. Well, there's, they there's so like they a, do other uh, mini games in it, but like I I have Splatoon too. Like the the core game is just the it's the three v three or four v four. I forget how many of painting the level like your color that that is actually the core game there's a single player like platformy bit there's a there's this the salmon run which i don't think is always available Probably and then no, it's it's i think like they do they treat uh splatoon 2 kind of similar to apex where like 
they'll swap in maps and different play modes and stuff like that. Exactly, and that's where some of that other stuff comes from, like like the basketball and everything. Those things aren't just always there. Like yeah. it's like special weekends and stuff like that is where they dump that stuff in for to like draw in more people playing. Uh, they're they're I, doing some stuff for Metroid Dread, some free updates. Yeah, it's free free downloads. It's, there's going to be a boss rush mode, which is interesting. There's going to be a rookie mode, which uh, you get healed up better, and then there's the nope mode, meaning I nope, I'm never going to play it. Uh, I hit kill mode. I think that should be on your uh, Metroidvania Mondays. No, no, uh, uh-uh. uh, you you watch me play Metroid Metroid Dread. Like, oh yeah, no, dude, I, you're they're... bad at games, but like I think it'd be entertaining to watch you struggle in that one. No, see, here's the thing. I and I had this conversation with somebody on my stream the other day. I was I was I was playing uh Pokemon la- uh, last night, and uh, they were asking me like, have you gotten any uh um alphas? I keep wanting to call them Apex, because that's what Monster Hunter does with the, the alpha-type things. I call them Apexes. Like, have you caught any a- alphas yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't really encountered any that I could, like, reasonably fight. I'm not that high of a level. And at one point, I run by a Tangrowth, and he's like, go fight that one. And I look at it, and it is, it's, I'm like, dude, this is a level 50. And I'm like, level 25. It's going to kill me in one hit. And he's like, go do it. Go do it. This will be entertaining. I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'll, I'll show you what it's going to be like. And I go and I encounter it, and I, it, it one hits my two Pokemon. Like, the first two, like, I don't even get to attack the first time, and it one hits my first Pokemon. That sounds throw about out my right. Second, throw out my second one, one hits the second one. I withdraw and I run away. And I, I let, I tell him, like, look, I have to find it, I have to power up my Pokemon, because a lot of these alphas are too high. And he starts telling me, well, it's every, it's, it's more entertaining to see a challenge. I'm like, it's not a challenge, though. This is just a, this is just decimation. Like yeah, like it, but if you were go so those alphas are basically they're they're stronger than their level. So like yeah, my Pokemon are all level sixty right now. Yeah, and even when I go into a fight against like a level like forty five to fifty alpha, mm-hmm. like because I'm trying to catch it, that thing is still taking out several Pokemon because it it only needs like two hits to to yeah. KO somebody. If it's not hitting them with um something it's weak against, like yeah. I found a um in Infernape Alpha, and he um he has Thunder Punch, and so it's an Infernape. Um, I think he's level sixty or sixty five. I throw out my Gyarados because I'm like, all right, he's strong enough. I can hit him with a with a an agil- agile style water attack. It'll be fine. Like it won't knock him out. Yeah. Um, before I can even hit him with the water attack, he hit me with a Thunder Punch and just KO'd my uh. Yeah. Yeah. My Gyarados. And it's like, well, and, fuck and, me. <laughs> yeah, and there's, th- so, like, what I was trying to get at was, like, there's there's a difference between fun, a fun challenge and just a stupid move. And Yeah, and um, I like, actually have stuff to say about the office stuff later when we talk about Pokemon yeah. anyway. And, like, not saying that the Metroid Dread no-hit mode would not be fun, but I, I probably wouldn't be able to get past Kraid unless I can figure out the sequence break and get the bombs first. Oh yeah, like there is absolutely zero chance of me getting past him. Like I had so much trouble in that fight. There's no way I would be able to do that without taking like a considerable amount of damage. Yeah, yeah. And like that's and, and like that would be fun to try for a little bit, but like I got super frustrated when I was playing Hollow Knight going after the Radiance, which is the final boss of the game before the DLC, and it's friggin' next to it's next to impossible, especially cuz RNG has to be on your side in order for it to be a, a like a really good fight, and that's a game where you can get hit a few times. So me not being able to get hit once, that's just like I don't know. In a game like Metroid, that just it would be too too frustrating. I might yeah. try it at some point, but I, it's I don't think I'm ever gonna set aside time strictly. To fight yeah, that. I I mean I I'm right there with you. Like I I was uh, giving you a hard time for it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, I found the game, the title of the game of uh, that uh, looked really cool in their montage later on. Okay. It was a uh, Getsu Fuma Den Undying Moon. Man, like I said in, in that um in our group chat, Nintendo really has been leaning into just random ass '90s RPGs that no like four people have ever fucking heard of, and it's it's fantastic. Well, uh, Getsu Fuma Den is not an RPG. It sounds like one. No, it's but according to IGN, it's a uh, roguelike. But uh, like, look up, look up uh, it, uh the the. If you're in the IGN article from there, it's a it's, side-scrolling uh, action adventure game. Uh, yeah, yeah. IGN calls it a roguelike set in a dark fantasy world, 
But, like, look up the art for this. And that's what really pulled me in. Was the style of the art for the characters and, and stuff that's like, oh, that looks really cool. And it's it's available today. So, should be able to pick it up, uh, well, yesterday. So, should be able to pick it up by now. I might check out check it out, see what the price is on it. Uh, that that looked really cool. Apparently, oh, no, I'm sorry, I was on the, the wrong tab. So, I was going to say, apparently it comes out in July, but that, that is a different game. Yeah. And then I think there were, I, uh, besides Splatoon, I think there were, like, I would say there were three major reveals in this. So there four, was... Four, uh, four if you include um, Earthbound. So I'd say, I, I don't think Earthbound's a major release because it's it's not the first time they've released those two games. Like, they have put them on basically every console in the last 20 years. Have they? I, I've, never, I've never owned them. So um, Earthbound has been re-released a bunch of times. I think it's even on the the SNES Classic. Yeah. Um, Earthbound Beginnings, which is just it's Mother One Earth. Our Earthbound is Mother Two. Earthbound mm-hmm. Beginnings is Mother One. Um, and then we never got Mother Three, which would be Earthbound something. Yeah. Uh, that's what people want, and like I guarantee, like that's what people thought maybe they were going to show, especially when they transitioned from Earthbound to Earthbound Beginnings. It's yeah. like, all right, well, they're doing both of these. Are we going to get three also? And they're like, no, fuck, fuck all of the Americans. <laughs> I mean, may, you, you never know, though. Maybe we will. Maybe they're, like, trying to get us ready for it. Uh, it has been... Like, that's that's why I said it might be four of the top three. It's one of the major announcements, but not a really big one. Yeah, and I honestly, like, I think at this point, they're not... Like, I would be super surprised if they ever actually released Mother 3, because... That game came out in 2006 on the Game Boy Advance. Mm-hmm. So it's already one of those things where they don't have a good platform to re-release it with. Because yeah. it's not like they, they really do anything with Game Boy Advance games anywhere else. And even Nintendo people have talked about it and it still hasn't happened. So like, I just, I don't think that game is ever going to see the light of day outside of like fan translations. In the West, I should say. Yeah, um, unless, unless... They decide to, you know, maybe include in your Switch, uh, Ultimate Switch Online Plus, a Game Boy Advance section with Mother Three. And they may do that, but I don't expect them to do that in the next year. I don't know. They're they're doing what they're doing a lot to support Switch Online Plus because one of the other big announcements was, uh, forty eight new Mario Kart Eight Deluxe tracks. Which, uh, like, I'm I'm sorry, that whole thing. Like, after I had some more time to think about it. That's absolute bullshit. What is? It's it's nearly a 10-year-old game that has $25 DLC being released for it. Just give us a new fucking Mario Kart. Come on. I mean, but people still play this one. I get that, but they are also... So they've sold 40 million copies. They're not selling more copies of Mario Kart at this point. Yeah. And they're releasing these 48 tracks over the course of the next two years. Well, yeah, I mean, it's over... Uh, end of 2023, which we're in 2022. But... Look, yeah, so, like, all of this year but, and then all of next year. But here, here's the thing. You have this service that they're, you're trying to get people to buy into. A, a yearly subscription purchase, $50 a year. Currently, a lot of people are complaining that it's not worth it and there's nothing on there worthwhile. But there's a lot of people that still play Mario Kart 8. To where if you were to release a new Mario Kart game, yes, you'll make money. But you're alienating the people who already have the game. Whereas, you're pushing people, hey... Increase your Switch Online budget by a little bit more, and you get this for free on top of the DLC for uh, Animal Crossing, on top of access to Sega Genesis and Nintendo 60 games. Yeah, like, I still, I think the expansion pass is still just not quite worth it, and this does not add anything worthwhile to it. Like, they, they should have announced a new Mario Kart, and then announced that if you have the expansion pass, you also get, um... Like the first DLC pack that comes with that Mario Kart. Like, but, this isn't but, even a Switch Mario Kart. This is the fucking Wii U Mario Kart that they just re-released on Switch. Yeah, and everyone has it. So here's, here's what I don't understand. You're complaining that the Switch Online is not worth it, but complaining that they didn't offer a $60 game with free DLC afterward. Instead, they're giving you, quote, free DLC if you have the online pass, which is only if you're a single person, twenty dollars more than what you'd be paying if you only, if you had uh, Switch Online, but which you're getting your money's worth because you also have the DLC for Animal Crossing as well. 
But like for me, I'm not getting anything out of that. I don't want to play an- any more Animal Crossing, and I'm not going to start playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Like I played that for two and a half years. I've got my fill of it. I don't want to play old levels from old Mario Karts. I, I mean, that's that's your choice, but like, I, I t- like, I'm not I, saying I, it's I, everybody's choice. Like I'm not but, saying like, that you can't be excited for it. No, no, I'm 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 just saying like it. It seems kind of silly. Like you're you're being you're being very personal about that. But and this is how games work. New games are released after an old game has been out for a while. We get a new Madden every year. We get a new Call of Duty every year. Yeah, and you know what? Now we don't have to get a new Madden every year because we're in the age of DLC and shit. They could just release updated rosters or give you double. You're doubling the track list, flat out doubling the track list in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. By giving us 48 tracks. But, like, I don't care about that. I don't need 48 new tracks. I don't want to play a game that looks like a Wii U game. I mean, I still... I have a blast playing Mario Kart. When was the last time you played it? Five, six years ago, because it got fucking boring. Maybe throw it in and try playing it. It's been five, six years. I don't... Well, see, that's the thing. Like, I, I don't... We've been over this before. I don't play multiplayer games. Like, I don't have fun playing fucking video games with other people. It's not an enjoyable experience, especially with Strangers Online. There's just, there's nothing fun about that for me. So, like, Mario Kart, I tend to play by myself. After you clear all the levels, you're done. Like, that's, I'm done with Mario Kart. And if I clear all the levels, did you get three stars on everything? Even 200cc in reverse track and everything else? No, because I don't want to fucking do that. Like, that's not fun to me. I mean, I'm just saying, though, like, you didn't clear all the levels. I, I'm, I did not say 100% all of the levels. That's the difference. I'm not a completionist. You know that. Like, I play through all the levels. I, I podium in all the levels on, what is it? One fi- is 150 the highest? Uh, well, like, like 200, 200 is like the high, highest, but isn't 150, isn't it like w- yeah. 50, one, 100, 150, and then 200 and reverse unlock later? Reverse, it's uh, 150 reverse 200. Yeah, so like, I, un- I, I podium in all the 150 maps, and then, you know, maybe I go in and I, like, play a little bit here and there. Like, if Erica wants to play, if we have people over, we'll pop it in. But, like, that's about it. Like, I'm not going back to Mario Kart to play 48 old levels. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I think this... It, like, I've, I always, I already thought that the Plus was, was worth it with the access to the Animal Crossing DLC. A game that I have not picked, touched since I stopped playing it late last year. And ha- or, have you touched I mean, any of the like, N64 games or the Genesis games? I haven't touched the N64 games. I did touch the Genesis game. So, like, do you think that it was worth upping your subscription when it sounds like you haven't really used much of it at all? Yeah. I think it was a worthwhile... But also, in my defense, I'm only paying $10 a year for it. That, actually, that's fair, because you, you do have it split up across quite a I few have, people. But you've got four people. You're only paying $20 a year for it. Well, so, I'm... So I basically pay for the whole thing because, like, Drew and Sarah don't use it all that much, and they actually gave me and Erica um, access to their Spotify plan. It's, so, like, it, it, it equals it, itself out there. It, it, it's 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 your your you you split it amongst four people. It is twenty dollars a person. But like, whether also, whether I'm, you pay for it all or not, you you have a payment plan set up or or a plan set up with you and whoever else. That it, you are not paying eighty dollars for it; you're paying twenty dollars a person for it. Sure, I mean it's twenty dollars a person, but like Eric and I are are basically count the same. Like it's it's all the same money, so that's forty dollars extra. And it could be a hundred dollars total. You're right; that's- it could be. And I still wouldn't like. I haven't gotten it. Like I I still didn't get it. Like at some point, I am sure they will put enough like like old games on there, particularly like Genesis games, that I think it's worthwhile. But, like, as it stands, I don't want to play any of the N64 games they have on there. I have those games on other platforms I can easily play that are, act- like, I have the the um, 3DS versions of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, which are better versions than the N64 versions. Um, and they just haven't released much on the on the Genesis yet. They've released, like, there's a couple good things on there. But, like, it took them a while to get, like, a, a good library on the SNES and NES, too. So, like, I get that that's not going to be like, a stellar collection of games right out of the gate. Um, but, like, right now, like, it would be an, an, a huge waste of money for me to upgrade that Switch plan. Like, there's zero things in the expansion pass that I would touch for the foreseeable future. I mean, 
That's, again, like, sure, for you, yes, but I'm, you already said they've sold 40 million copies of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Like, there are, I'm sure, at least 35 million copies of people who still play it constantly. Before, actually, before we came online, I was looking after you guys had said, well, that the Mario Kart 8 didn't make it worth it. I was looking on Twitch to see, I wonder how many people actually stream Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, and even watch it. And right now, they've got 6.4 thousand viewers, uh, uh, watching Mario Kart 8 right now. Like, a lot of people do watch it, and a lot of people do still play it. And that's like, totally fine, but like, 6,000 is not 40 million. No, but, and still, but 6, it's 6,000 viewers. I, I, it doesn't tell me how many people are actually playing it. But that's just, that's right now just the, the small group of people who stream game, or not the small group, but the group of people who stream games, like, there, I, I, there's no way, as far as I know, to see player count of Mario Kart games. I, I don't on, think there, I don't think there is. But there, like, I, me and my friends played at least once a month together. There's times where I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what, I kind of want to just play Mario Kart right now. And I'll turn it on and I'll play it. Like, I have I'm not never the, done I'm, that. <laughs> I'm not the only one who thinks that way. Anytime I see that a Mario Kart tournament's coming up, I'm like, you know what, let me try, let me test myself. Like, Mario Kart is a fun game. Yeah, I'm not going to sit there and play it nonstop every day, day in and day out. But I literally play it at least once a month. And look, I'm not saying Mario Kart's not fun. I enjoy Mario Kart. I don't want to play a 10-year-old Mario Kart, whether it has new level, And they're not new levels. They're levels from the previous games. Well, they're remastered levels. Like, they're, they are new levels because some of them are going to be... Great, they look a little shinier. Well, no, it's gonna... They, like, they, they did the remasters with a lot of the uh, SNES games originally and stuff like that, too. Like, it's not just shinier. The SNES levels actually have texture to them and are, like, not just, like, these flat little fucking shits. Like, look at... In Mario Kart 8, they had... Uh, 8 Deluxe. They had the N64 Rainbow Road. That wasn't just, like, Rainbow Road. It was, like, a full-on fucking thing. It's such a long track that they broke it up into three sections instead of three laps. Like, and, I mean, yeah, they add, the DL, they, they didn't say they were going to add new courses, but it's still, like, it's, it's updated courses from across the generation, graphically updated. You're complaining about it being a 10-year-old game, but there are still so many people that play it. And I would much rather pay $25 for 48 tracks in a game that I still play even 10 years later, then pay $60 for maybe 12 new tracks and a few characters and then have to pay another download fee for the additional 8 to 16 tracks that they're going to give us after that of $25. Because you know that's what's going to happen. And like, to be fair, you, there's always 24 tracks in a Mario Kart. Uh, well, in the, in, the, yeah, in the original, it was 8... It's yeah, it's eight courses with four tracks each, and then in in deluxe because they added the four sets of DLC tracks or DLC um packs or or, or cups. So in eight deluxe. Oh, that's right. I forgot they. I forgot deluxe had all the yeah, DLC there's, stuff. There's uh six in six uh on top, six on bottom, with four in each. So they're doubling the track list in this, and some of them are tracks. And I'm like, you know what? I remember that track. I'm happy, and also. This is now, it makes, uh, it makes it, uh, let's see, 1 in 148th chance of playing Baby Road instead of 1 in 1 in, in 24th chance of playing Baby Road. Cause fuck Baby Road. I don't know, like, I, none of the Mario Kart levels, like, bothered me enough. Like, <laughs> you, you don't, you don't, you don't get stuck in, uh, playing with some friends where there are certain people that will, because no one likes Baby Road, um, they will pick that and troll constantly. There was one night we played for probably about two and a half, three hours, and we played Baby Road at least once every uh, cup. Wow, that's that just seems boring. It, it, Baby Road sucks. It is the worst track, and people will people will um, will troll on it. Or I don't like, even know what track it is to be honest with you. It's the one that's actually six laps long, and it's just a novel, and it's just it's stupid. It's boring. Oh, it's called Baby Park. Baby Park, yeah, I was calling it Baby Park, okay. whatever. I, I googled it and eventually found it. It, it was from the, um, it, uh, it was in Double Dash, Double Dash and yeah. everything since Double Dash, basically. Okay. I, I I do recognize that now that, like, I looked it up. Yeah. I don't I don't memorize a lot of the, the course names. Like, I just know them, like, 
from like what they are. Yeah, I mean that's I'm the same way. I don't know a lot of their names, especially the older ones. Even the even all uh, the newer ones in Mario Kart, like I just I just know the tracks themselves, and I know which ones are my favorite. Yeah, like I I we're not going to agree on this at all. Like I do not think that was a good announcement. Like it's a ten year old game. I'd ra- I I would rather have a new Mario Kart. I'd rather have a new Mario Kart with like whatever its new gimmick is to experience something. Uh, it's Mario Kart, so like obviously like in the in the end they're all the same, but like they they add new gimmicks and stuff to each one. But like, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I again, I, I especially with how you play Mario Kart, I'm gonna hard disagree because you're gonna play through all new, new, new 24 levels once, and then you're gonna stop. To be fair, why I play, want, I play you, them more than once. But why would you much rather pay sixty dollars for something that you're not gonna play that much, whereas you can jump back into Mario Kart 8 now and play and play double the track list that's now and, and it's not even double the track list but you're getting double what the initial track list is because like i know the mario kart 8 gimmicks already like it's just it's the same fucking game with a bunch of old tracks that's fine like i'm not interested in that i'd rather have a new mario kart game to spend you know 15 20 hours playing and then be done with it i mean i'm trying to i i don't know if there was a power slide in older mario kart games but literally, the o- there's never really the only time they really incorporated a new gimmick was Double Dash. Well, no, so not everyone had like your your um your drifting and sparks and the power slides. Yeah, um, but once they that was incorporated in Double Dash. Yeah, and then they also at like so Double Dash Double Dash's big gimmick was like the two riders, the two um, riders, and the and the the power sparks, the power yeah, the power dash. Um, and then after that, they took away the two drivers. They had the power da- the power slide, and yeah, maybe it was driving underwater or or the 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 um gliding or or something like or like that. Or the driving motorcycles up on the side of the road or like. But what 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 new gimmick do you expect that they could? What do you want to go full Diddy Kong racing now and give us the flight the entire race? Actually, that would be like, awesome if you could get like little fucking planes and like hovercrafts and have them be. Racers that I would I liked D- Diddy Kong Racing. I like Diddy Kong Racing a lot. I just I I like a new Mario Kart is not going to have much of a new gimmick. I don't think there's and the, there's look they really never have much... much of a new gimmick. Like I said, I would just rather play a new Mario Kart for twenty hours than play more of Mario Kart Eight that I have played twice over the last decade. Like not only twice, but like I played it all on the on the Wii U, and then I'm like, oh, I want Mario Kart for the Switch bought it, and played it all again on the Switch. Like, I don't need to play that game anymore. And, like, that's my own fault for buying a fucking um, Wii U game that I already owned on the Switch. Yeah, I mean, that was that was my thing. I wasn't going... I, I wasn't going to buy Mario Kart 8. Uh, I was going to wait until a new Mario Kart came out when I got my Switch. Because I was like, oh, they're gonna release a, a new one. And they never did. But what we get are now 48 levels, so if I had not gotten Mario Kart 8, I'd probably be getting it by now. But I definitely would have gotten it by now, because my friends play it, like I said, we play it, like, maybe once a month, once once every other and, month. And so. you have a very different, like, experience with it. Like, I've never played it online. I have zero interest in it. You are the only person I know I th- that I that I think I know that owns Mario Kart. Like, does Eric own it? I don't know. Maybe? My brother? Yeah. I'm 99% sure he owns it. Um... I like we know Drew doesn't because fucking Drew doesn't own anything on Switch, <laughs> um, except for Hades. I think he probably bought Hades on Switch. <laughs> I think he did buy it on buy Hades. On- um, uh, but yeah, like you're the only person I know that has Mario Kart on Switch. And no offense, but like I don't want to play Mario Kart I, online with you. I don't want to play I Mario mean, Kart online with anybody. I like Drew is the only person I know who doesn't have Mario Kart on Switch. Like I also don't know that many thing. people with like, Switches either. Like you, Drew, and Eric, and the Vogels. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, sh- well, yeah, you just don't have friends. I so. know, oh, I, I fucking hate people, so. Yeah. Um, but I, again, to me, this makes the Switch Online, it, whether, look, you can't, whether or not you're going to use it, you have to admit this does make it more worth it. I, so here's the problem, though. I don't think it's worth it at all to begin with. So them adding okay. this, like, sure, this is one nice thing they've added to a thing that is completely overpriced for nothing. But now you get two twenty dollar DLCs. Twenty. Hey, 20 plus I was gonna say they're tw- they're twenty five dollar DLCs for like sure. For... It's it's DLCs for games. Cool. Like 
plus access to other games. Like I said, whether or not you're going to use it, look at it as somebody who's trying to figure out if they want to make this purchase. And look at it as someone who has these games. Before, $50 was a hard pick, but now $50 for $50 of DLC content that has come out over the past six months. You're getting your money's worth at I this mean, point. And it, they're go like, yes, you're getting six, six levels over, you're getting 48 levels over the course of the next two years, which means it's like six levels probably every quarter. Okay. It's gonna, it's over time, but it's still, you're getting your money's worth at this point. In my opinion, like even taking out that I play Mario Kart, if I were to look at this and be like, oh, I do have Mario Kart, but I don't have the, I, and, and I do have Animal Crossing, I might not play them that often, but you know that, this this is now more worth like whether like I don't know I, I I'm having a hard time trying to explain how I, I'm trying to explain it but it's like I understand what you're saying look I at just it not I in don't your eyes. think it I don't think it's a good deal it's not a good service like people stopped playing Animal Crossing largely like there are still tons of people that play it Animal Crossing drastically dropped off from from what it was doing and they really like they released that DLC too late cool they they added it to this dlc expansion that's fantastic same thing with mario kart like it's a 10 year old game whether people still play it or not like it's still a 10 year old game that it's like 25 five dollar dlc for a decade old game or buy this expansion pass that is useless otherwise because like there isn't anything good on those two on the n64 and, and sega games yet or at least not enough to make it worthwhile and like the entire switch online thing is just it's the slightest bummer. And, like, I don't actually care all that much about the games available in the the things. Like, I subscribe to PS Plus for cloud backups. Like, I, I honestly don't... I like that they give free games, but usually the free games are kind of bullshit. Um, I don't think I've played one of the free games that they've released on PS Plus in five or six years. Um, I want the cloud backups, though. Nintendo has you paying for this service for cloud backups, and so many of their first-party games don't support it. Like, Pokemon games just don't fucking support it at all. Um, Animal Crossing only, like, kind of supports it. Like, I'm paying for a service that, like, if my Switch were to, like, get stolen or die or anything like that, I'm just fucked out of saves for a bunch of games. Yeah, I mean, but, like, here's... And the difference between you and me, I play games online. I play games with friends. I play games with people. And so I pay for the service to have access to be able to play the games online and stuff. And it's... I And I do occasionally play the game... I mean, I haven't touched my... PS5 in four months, but or three months, something like that. But like, I I will play the ga- the free games that come on there. Like, I have these the access to these for I don't I don't, I personally do not care about the cloud save. I don't because if I lose my shit, I lose my shit. Like, if if honestly, there are times that I consider deleting my saves after I'm done playing a game because I'm generally not going to go back to it anyway. Hell, I have a save of Skyrim on my Switch right now. That I played like two years ago. I'm never going to go back to it. I'm but you know, play we, it again. we also play like, games very differently in the fact that where if you put a game down and don't play it for like a month, you just fucking start over. Yeah, I, I do. I if do. I put if I put a game down and I don't play it for a year and a half, I just pick it up and start playing right where I left off. Yeah, I, I can't. I, I don't do that because I, I need to, in a way, refresh my memory of of how far I, like, and there's a difference. And I get uh, that. I, I do understand back, that. If I were to go back and play Monster Hunter Stories 2 right now, I would not start at the beginning because I was near the end. But generally when I do stop and take breaks, it's either in games like Skyrim or um, uh, Stardew Valley or, or stuff like that where it's like you kind of need to know where you were and what you were doing and what your goals were at the during that playthrough. To be able to continue properly with how you were set up, but also, like, you know, the beginning of the games are kind of a little bit more fun than the rest of it. Like, that's, like, I have that problem with City Skylines. If I don't play a city at least once a week, probably gonna just start over, because the beginning of the game is a lot more fun than trying to figure out what I was actually doing in the city. Yeah, and, you know, like, I mean, we play very different games a lot of times, too, Mm -hmm. and, like, I will, like, just dip off of a game for months at a time and then come back to it, but it's usually, like, an action game or, like, an RPG or something where, like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to, like, refamiliarize myself with, like, the, um, the controls. But for the most part, like, I'm going to remember what's happening yeah. in the story, even if I don't remember it, like, 
as soon as I started up. Within like an hour or two, like I, I remember the characters, I remember what's going on. I, I get a hang of the controls again and, and can just dip back into it. Like there, there, there are very few times where like I'll start a game up. I'm like, I just, I can't remember any of this. Like I have to start over. I'll usually just persevere because like I don't want to start over. Like I got hours into it. I don't want to have to do all that. Like I don't have to work to get back to that point. I just want to like finish where I left off. Yeah. And, but, and at that point, and, and this is like, I did, I did that with, uh, Tomb Raider. Um, the second Tomb Raider of the of the newer series, uh, I played through the end of it after stopping for probably close to a year, just because I was near the end. And as I was done, I was like, I don't know why I did this. I did I did not want to play this, but I was near the end. And it's like for me, it's in order to go back and play a game. There's a reason you stopped playing it. And like Monster Hunter Stories is like I just I lost it. I lost the interest. Not saying it's a bad game, but at the time I just lost the interest. Tomb Raider, I just fucking hated that game. Yeah, and like and I stopped that, playing. Like the interest, like I definitely have the interest thing come and go, but it's not like I lose total interest in it. It's just I don't want to play that game at that mm. time anymore. And then all of a sudden, it's been a few months, and I'm like, oh shit, I need to go back and finish that. And then I go back and finish it. And like sometimes if you, it's more than a few months. Sometimes it's like a year, a year and a half, two years. Like, um, like. I I legitimately enjoy Horizon Zero Dawn. It's kind of a slog to get through like that game though. So I, like I'll play it like a bunch for like a week or two and then I'll just put it like I I still haven't finished that whole game and I bought it when it launched. I started playing it on stream back in May or Juneish. Uh when after it was free for a few weeks or something like that. Uh I started playing it on stream and I don't know if I'm going to go back to it. I just was not feeling it. I just like it, it's it's a it's a sluggish game and I, I watched a whole video about, like, the history of Horizon Zero, like, the history of, like, the, 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 in the in-game history, not, like, how it's built and stuff, but it's, like, an hour and a half long story lore video about Horizon Zero Dawn, I'm like, alright, I think I might get the second one, probably never gonna beat the first one, because it's just, it's such an, it's, it's a much older game that does not, it, it's sluggish, and the, the combat system is just a, a, a slog to get through, and it's, yeah, it's, like, it, it just, it's not, it's funny, it, that you're right. Like, like I agree with you. It's very funny that that game is what, like six years old ish. Like 2017 mm-hmm. is when it came out, and it really does feel like that it, style it, of game has um evolved a ton in those like five or six years to the point where a lot of the things that that game did that weren't quite being done yet are already old and not really used yeah. that way anymore. But like the world's really good, and I I do like the the combat and the action of the game. It's just the world is so big traveling through. It isn't the best time because it is pretty empty, like between missions. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, it's cool to like find like the different like robot dinosaur things and like fight them. But then it also really sucks when like you stumble across something that's just way too strong and you have to just try and run away as hard as you fucking can. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what it really took away from me was there were I I was just exploring the map at one point trying to collect things and I went to like the end of the game area not realizing that's what it was and just getting stuck in these fights because I couldn't get out of it if I tried to get out of it I'd lose a bunch of shit and lose a lot of time so it's like well this kind of fucking sucks uh, because I didn't know I was going to the end of the game because I was just exploring the map that they had in front of me um. And it's, it's, like, to me, the game feels very Monster Hunter 3-ish. Like, it's very slow, very sluggish. And, like, Monster Hunter games have made advances and made the game play a lot more streamlined and better. And this one is just, like, it's good, but, like, yeah, like you said, it's just, it's, even for its time, the combat feel, feels dated. And I just, I, I, and I have a tough time going back. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. But, um, but, but there's let's... also two other announcements that they made that we didn't even talk about yet. Yeah, I was, uh, was going to say let, let's let, let's wrap up um, this Nintendo thing. Uh, Mario Strikers is coming back was, after a very long gap. Dude, I'm so excited for this. I am like Mario Strikers on the GameCube was, in my opinion, the is and still is the best Mario sports game ever. Yeah, no, like Mario Strike, like Mario Strikers on the GameCube was the only one of those like Mario sports games that like I legitimately thought was a fun time. Like mm-hmm. Mario. Mario Golf was fine if you like you were playing it like at people's houses and you were just kind of like passing the controller. 
Um, mm-hmm. we just spent an hour talking about Mario Kart. Uh, what, what other sports were there? Tennis? tennis. I, I'm, I'm not a big tennis fan to begin with, so like, tennis is tennis. Um, and we, then they had, we they sports had tennis was better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they had a, a Mario baseball, which was good. It Sluggers. was good. Yeah, but it's just, it, like, they haven't brought that back, and it's just, it wasn't, it wasn't strikers. Like, there was Mario also, Sluggers, there was also Sluggers basketball. Was, good, though. was there a basketball? I forgot about basketball. Mario, Mario hoops. Oh, what was that on? Uh, it may have only, I don't think it was GameCube. It might have been like Game Boy Advance or DS. I don't think I don't it was on Wii that. either. Uh, but this one, like, when they were announcing Mario Strikers Battle League, I got a little scared, cause, like, it kind of felt like they were announcing a, a, uh, cell phone game. It didn't look necessarily like a cell phone game, but the way they were explaining it to me initially felt like, especially with the term Battle League in it, I was like, oh, this better not be a fucking cell phone game. This better not be a cell phone game. And it wasn't. And, like, you can customize your character. You can make them stronger or faster with the gear you're wearing. And it just, it looks fun. You can get uh 4v4 matches going. You can set up a whole club so that people can join you in your matches online. Uh It's just, it's all around. It looks like they're going to do another Mario sports game right. Um... And it's just, I was so excited when they when they showed that. Yeah, that I thought that one, like I saw that, I'm like, okay, that's at the time that was the first thing in this direct. I'm like, okay, no, that's actually a cool announcement because leading up to that, it was like there was a few of those like remake things, like that Live Alive or however you're supposed to pronounce that. That thing looks like it might be neat, but it's you know it's a game from like 1994, so it's not like it's anything new. And like then Strikers was like, okay, no, like Strikers is all right. I don't know that I'll buy it, but like. Those th- those original Mario soccer games weren't too bad. Um, and then what was the last one that, that you were thinking of? Oh, uh, uh, Nintendo Switch Sports. Okay, that's I figured that was <laughs> that was. I it wanted too. To, I wanted to talk that one before Strikers, but uh, yeah, Nintendo they they're doing uh Wii Sports, but on the Switch, uh, they have um what is it? What were the games? Uh, bowling, tennis, uh, sword play, which is uh Chambra, soccer, badminton, and volleyball. Uh, and and then, they do uh, plan on releasing a golf mode as well at some point. Yeah, um, free the game post launch on the 29th, or it's available on the 29th, but uh, free updates after. The- and there's going to be an game. online play test um, next week. Which, if you're a Switch Online member, you can join it. Any Switch Online, not not just Plus, any Switch Online member can do the uh, play test. So I might try that. Might uh, might even throw that up on. Uh, <laughs> that'd be weird to throw that up on on stream. We'll figure it out. I don't know. Uh, you're just standing in front of your fucking computer, wa- wailing away. Uh, let's see. That's the eighteen, eighteenth through twentieth. Yeah, I would not be able to have any time to stream that next week. Oh so, yeah, because that's that's the weekend. So yeah, we're yeah, it's everything's happening next week. Um, wait, what else is happening next weekend? Well, so there's your D and D game, and then my dad's birthday's next weekend. So we're going oh, to that's I forgot you mentioned that that for some reason I thought on, that was this weekend. On Saturday, and then on uh, Sunday, it's we're recording the next session of Brose, uh, because we kind of we're trying to get two more done before March. That's fair. Uh, I think yeah, the next we, weekend is the next bonus action, right? Uh, yeah, the weekend after that is the next bonus action, twenty sixth. As long as everyone is fine. No, I think we're doing the twenty seventh. I think we, we uh, had yeah, to do yeah, Sunday it's, again. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. Yeah, but anyway, so it, they they had a little uh, match between uh, the announcer and somebody else. I can't remember who it was. Um, I, it's 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 Wii Sports. Like I I it's dumb, but I'm kind of excited for it. I'm I, obviously it's going to have a high price tag. I'm hoping it doesn't have too high of a price tag. Hoping it might this just be a fifty dollar game. If if it's a fifty dollar game, like I'm more inclined to buy it. Not not right away, but I'll be more inclined to buy it pretty early on. Uh. But I will definitely try to do the online play test. It's going to be a good. Um, but overall, I think that's really we we covered most, if not everything, that was on that direct. To me, it was a good direct. They had they showed a lot of good stuff. Some they they did have some more for Kirby, but we've seen a bunch about Kirby. Um, I I think personally, it was it oh was actually good. actually for Kirby. Um, Drew did send us that one thing. So this is a quote from Drew. He he couldn't be here tonight. Um. He just wants, he wanted it known that he thinks that they dropped the ball by not calling the, the Kirby when he ate a car, Carby. I mean. I don't disagree. No, but I, I actually, I, I wasn't paying a lot of attention when they showed the Kirby, so. Um, so um, Kirby is 
aside from just being able to like eat and turn into enemies, he also basically has the same ability as Mario with um Cappy and can just eat and turn into any random objects. Like he turns into a car, he turns into a vending machine. Mm-hmm. Like it's very goofy, but it's Kirby, so it'll be fun. He is some sort of like all powerful deity, so we're good. Yeah, yeah. And uh there was there was uh, one last I wanted to make a quick mention of, but I can't even so it's not it All right. Good. Well, I guess we'll move on then. Uh, Unless did you I, just I, remember what it was? I remembered what it was as I was flipping through. Uh I did skip through one thing on there, and this is why I couldn't remember what it was. Because I don't need another fucking kart racer on Switch. But it's a Disney kart racer yeah, with I, Pixar I, I, characters. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't need. This is now going to be what at least four kart racers on Switch now, because we saw recently saw another kart racer that's going to be exclusively on Switch. I feel like that Disney one is going to be multi-platform. Oh, it probably will, but still, like I don't need another kart racer. I mean, the Disney one isn't a kart racer, but it's basically a kart racer. I don't know. I'm uh, more yeah. excited for that than I am for Mario Kart levels. Uh, but yeah, let's let's move on. Uh, to, uh, let's talk more about, uh, Legends Arceus. Yeah, so, I have played a lot more of it than you have. Mm-hmm. I only had a chance to play it, uh, once since, uh, last time. Yeah, I have, I'm like 25 hours. I, I have unlocked what I believe is the final section of the map, like the, the t- top middle section that's gonna be like uh-huh. the snowy icy area. I have not gone there yet. I've actually been spending a lot of time going back to the other ones and clearing up all of the side quests I have available. Yeah. Um. Because I had like I'd been picking some picking them up whenever they they were available, but it was always like, all right, now go back to like the the coastlands or go back to the mire. And I'm like, well, that's not where I'm at right now. I don't want to go over there to do this random thing, so I'll just do that later. <laughs> I I I'm so happy that they threw in side quests and junk like that in this game. Yeah. Like, so fucking I fucking hate how they do them. Yeah. It's it's not great. I had so I have a I, I have a list of pros and cons that I'm gonna read read off real quick Uh Um, i'm gonna start with the cons because it actually it seems like a longer list but some of these things are a little like just like silly nitpicky um so cons for me there's no targeting or indication when something is attacking you so uh, well not for when you're being attacked but who's attacking you Mm -hmm. so like you get like the little bar at the top of the screen letting you know that somebody is but there have been a bunch of times where, like, I'm, like, kneeling in, in grass, spinning around in a circle. I see zero Pokemon around me that seem to be, like, looking at me in any sort of way. And then all of a sudden, like, a toxic thing falls out of the sky onto yep. me. Yep. Um, I, I, I said at least 45 times last night streaming, what the fuck is attacking me? Because I would have that red eye and I don't know what was actually coming to me. Yeah, so, like, that's super hard to, like, figure out sometimes. It's... And, like, there are some Pokemon that, like, aren't aggressive to you, and if you just miss that there happens to be an aggressive one in the bunt, like, like a mm-hmm. different Pokemon there, like, it's never hard to get away from them or to throw out a Pokemon. Like, I've never, I've, I've yet to be knocked out, like, yeah, yeah. period, let alone by a Pokemon without throwing somebody out. Yeah. Um, also, all of the NPCs are just fucking, co- like, copy-paste, like, you have, like, your named characters that are part of the story, like, the leaders of the different clans and stuff like that. But if you, like, look at a lot of the other people, especially ones that give you quests, they're all the same. Like, I've I've met, like, four different people that are all the same guy with a slightly receding hairline and a mustache that's mm-hmm. asking no, me to do that's, random things. That's, and and that's, that's been one of my bigger complaints about the game is the lack of style, and that bleeds into it. Like, or, or the lack of style bleeds into the fact that there's not a lot of difference differences in yeah. the npcs because like they didn't load in and render in a lot of different looks so you're going to run into the same character like i there, literally there's what six hairstyles in the fucking game yeah well so you do unlock a little bit more hair at, at a certain point and the people the the people that sell the hair that that do the haircuts and that sell clothes actually it sends you on side quests and those side quests do unlock like different patterns and different hair colors and stuff yeah. like that. Still not great, but like no, you, it's... to your point though, like it is, it is definitely missing out on some style. And considering there is only one village, that's it. There, there's one other small like random village that you can find that's like um one of the clans, it's either Diamond or Pearl Clan. Um, I believe it's the Diamond Clan because I just that they all look pretty much the same too. They're all wearing the yeah. exact same outfit, but yeah, yeah. like. In a lot of cases, they're not even palette swapping people. Like those guys that give you the things that have like the receding hairline and the mustache, they're identical. 
They're wearing the yeah. exact same outfit. A few of the women are are the same character model, and they just gave them a different like kimono yeah. color. Yeah, but and like, like it's only, there's me, only one village. Like, why couldn't yeah. you have just done? 40 unique character models like yeah. it's not like they're highly detailed character models but like just every person that gives you a quest just let them look different yeah. there, there's 40 fucking characters in this game how hard is that and, and to me like i would not be so upset about this if we weren't coming off of a game like sword and shield that had such amazing style to the character and the character de- uh, and the npc designs yeah, like, you, like you, there was a lot of good NPC designs. Plus, like that game was far larger. So if when you were going from city to city, the characters always had a slightly different aesthetic because like different cities, different like clothing styles, different um like biomes and stuff. Like so, even if they were the same models, they usually had you know a slightly different color shirt or something. You wouldn't notice it as much. But here, you're just going back to the same place and talking to the same people. You're like, oh, you're all just the fucking same. They didn't yeah. even give you, like, a different color fucking shirt. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, 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 it, they dropped the ball in that big time. Yeah, so next up on, on my list, storage. Now, I, I, I just want to explain this one real quick. I do not mind that there is limited storage. Not a big deal. Um, is, is it frustrating when, like, you run out of space and have to, like, throw things away to, like, pick up the item you actually need? Absolutely. But not the end of the world. Like, the items are, are easy enough to come by in that game. It's not a big deal. But we talked about it last week. The method for storage upgrades is the most infuriating and overpriced garbage I've ever seen. I, I stopped yeah. doing it. I, I, I spend my money on just buying Pokeballs now. Because uh-huh. it is easier to buy a bunch of, like, Ultra Balls than it is to gather everything I need to craft them. Yeah, I, and I, I craft I'm... the specialty balls, like the, the light balls and the heavy balls instead. Yeah, I'm at I'm at the point where I'm spending uh six thousand and it's going up by a thousand every time, and it's I, just like this. This is not. I'm not. It starts like, going up by two thousand eventually. Yeah, I think once you hit yeah. ten thousand, it starts going up two thousand, and it takes too long. Like it doesn't take a long time, but the fact that you have to do that same exact song and dance for every single upgrade mm-hmm. is just infuriating. And and the very limited money that you do make in this game, like. Oh no, that that changes. Um, if you might not have caught on to this yet because you're still early, every time you you upgrade your your rank, every like every star you get, you get more money when you go back to the professor and and tell him that you've yeah. like caught stuff. Um, yeah, it says that. It says that. Even when I only catch like three things and they're not even like really adding anything new to my Pokedex, I'm coming back with like five to ten thousand dollars. Okay. And I have I'm I have two stars left to get. Two or three. Mm-hmm. I I almost have all of them. I I hit the point now where every Pokemon will obey me. Okay. Um. But yeah, like money, like very much like like most RPGs, like money early on definitely a thing. But once you get to like maybe the halfway point on like that star thing, it just becomes like a non-issue because you can just go to any one of the different zones and just walk around catching things, like just throwing Pokeballs and go back to the professor and he'll just be like, "All right, here's like twenty grand for all these Pokemon that you caught. Thank you." Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, just the, the, again, just the, the way that you actually expand your storage is just super frustrating. I hate the way they did that. Um, next thing on this list that, that was super annoying is your, your Pokemon boxes, like where like the Pokemon get kept at the, the prairie. Uh-huh. Um, you can't sort that. There's no, no sorting in there. You have no, to just, no. if you want to move things around, you have to manually do it. And yeah. I fucking hate it. I want to just sort them by like name. So that I can have all my fucking like Bidoofs together because I've caught Bidoofs in six fucking places. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I haven't tried to um, release any because I heard that there's a way to mass release. Uh, it, and that is actually very easy. Um, when you go talk to the Prairie Lady or any one of the guys at like the camps, yeah. and when you're looking at, at your Pokemon down in the bottom right, it, I think it's hit Y to like multi delete. Or it might actually even be the minus button, because the minus button is what sorts your inventory boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, minus might be the thing that lets you do multi-select to delete. And they also have options to, like, multi-select and search and all that stuff. Like, there are a lot of nice features in the in the, the boxing, but the fact that I can't sort them with the way that it's laid out is super annoying. Yeah, and, that is, that is, it's dumb. And they may have, it, it, this may have been like this in other Pokemon games, but this game is so much more focused on catching the same thing multiple times. Yeah. 
that like there's actually I don't know if you've gotten it. There's a side quest where this um, there's two of them actually. There's one where people ask you to bring them um, one of each of the Burmese, so the green, the white, and the pink. Okay. Um, and then they want you to come back again when you've completed the Pokedex. There's um, another guy who s- keeps sending you to different locations where combies are because he wants to try the different honey from the like the different areas. And it's like cool. Maybe I already caught these, but like it's a pain in the ass to go through all 27 of my boxes to find all the different yeah. combi to see yeah. if any of them are what oh, he's looking for. I'm I'm dealing with that with a fucking goddamn weasel. Like I still I caught a 2. fucking 7 weasel. That but sucks. You need fucking 2.8. So I think 2.8 2, I think 2.8 is is at the size when you get the little notification that you caught in a large one. No, it's 2.7. Oh, that sucks. Um, catch the, um, alpha. I mean, I gotta find the alpha weasel to catch it. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's in the first zone. I just don't remember where in the first zone. Mm-hmm. Um, also, because we were talking about the alphas a little bit earlier, and I have more to say about this later, but I, before I forget, um, just because you're low level doesn't necessarily mean you can't catch them. You just can't battle them. Um, something that works, not all the time, but you know, enough. And you don't automatically get attacked usually is if you, if you sneak up to where one of them is, throw, um, some berries on the ground, kind of like lure them around, especially like the raspberries and the ones that like make them easier to catch. Mm-hmm. Kind of like get, throw them and position them so that they are close to where you're at, but that they'll be facing away from you. Sneak up and throw whatever the heaviest heavy ball you have. Cause like you unlock different versions of that ball. Like it's basically like a pokeball, a great ball and an ultra ball, but for the heavy ones throw the best one of those that you have at them from behind hit them in the back with it when they're unsuspecting and there is a higher chance that you will catch the alpha without having to battle it um i've caught maybe like 20 alphas altogether, and i want to say maybe like eight of them i've caught like that without any fight Mm -hmm. um and like if if they if they pop out they generate unless you are not in the grass hiding they almost never attack right away. They'll get the question mark and they'll kind of scurry away and be angry. But like, if you just leave and come back or just chill for a second, throw some more berries, they'll calm the fuck down and you can try again. Um, but what was next on this list? Um, I'm a little annoyed by some of the vague side quests. So have you gotten the Wanda quests yet? No. All right. So there's a bunch of them that are kind of like this. So there's a guy that he is usually in the the galaxy hall place and his like sister i think it is keeps getting lost because she has no sense of direction oh i just got my first one of those yeah so the first one i remember not being that bad because you basically can follow like right from the camp um you can use um ursa luna to to find the person but like at, at a certain point one of them is in the the coastlands which i don't think you've gotten to yet and it's uh-huh. a fairly large area and they don't tell you what section she might be in. Like, they don't say, like, oh, she went missing in such and such place in, like, the quest text. He may have mentioned it when I got the quest, but I don't do it as soon as I pick it up. Like, I, I picked that quest up and, like, three days later went to do it. Yeah, um, yeah. And, like, nowhere in the quest description does it say what part of the zone she's in. So I literally had to start at the bottom and just slowly work my way up riding um, Ursa Luna, who's not very fast. Looking for the fucking blue lines. And it's like, be a little less vague. Like, I'm all for having to, like, problem solve and figure it out. But telling me that it's just in this zone versus, like, oh, they're on such and such beach of this zone. Or that I saw them near Apom Hill in the coastlands. It's like, cool. I will start walking towards Apom Hill. I'll walk past it. I'll circle back. Like, eventually I'll find it. But, like, the coastlands are huge. Like... Walking that whole thing trying to find this lady was the worst fucking time. Like, it was, um, and th- there was another one in the Meyerlands. There's a guy who wants you to find his lost charm, and he says he lost it while running away from the Alpha, um, Hippodon. So it's like, cool. I found the Alpha Hippodon. I took him out. I took out all the other ones around him. Start looking. It's nowhere. I finally happen to walk into the, um, the, the swamp on the other side of where the, the Falcon Alpha was, not in the one that the Alpha was in. And there's, like, a, a, a cutscene starts playing. Because I happened to get close enough to this thing that it triggered the cutscene. Mm-hmm. But, like, it wasn't where the alpha was. And there was no other thing signifying that it was there. Because the the game doesn't have a draw distance. 
And you had to be right on top of it for you to see the little fucking glint in the, the fucking muck. Yeah. So, like, just stuff like that where, like, it's, they're, I love the side quests. Like you said, so glad that they added side quests to the game. And a lot of them aren't bad. Like, they're actually giving you something interesting to go do. I have one that's literally, like, on the full moon, go find the Clefairy and let me know if they still fucking dance the way they do where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Like, that's super my, cool. It's like, I know my, where the Clefairy are. I can do this. <laughs> my problem with the side quests, there's two of them. Two major problems. And I, in my opinion, these are major problems. Because there are so many side quests, I cannot track more than one. Yeah. If <laughs> if I could track three or four or five side quests at a time... I would be happy and give me a little box telling me what my side quest is so I don't have to keep pressing minus and then Y and then left uh, bumper, then right bumper to make sure that they're all lined together and I can go down my list. No, I don't want to fucking do that. Every five minutes, I'm trying to find the side quest and figure out what I'm doing. Yeah. And if you're going to have a quest board, do not. Make me have to go to the quest board to get a quest to then go talk to somebody to find out what the quest is. Just let me read what the fucking quest is. Or let me track multiple quests so I don't have to keep going to my menu to track that quest every time I finish one of the quests where I have to talk to somebody. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, I, I, I agree with all that. Um, like, one of the, one of the next things I, I had was actually about the, mel- the menus being cumbersome. And specifically be about the, like, the map stuff. Like, having to go into the map, and then going into the quests from the map, and then when you tab over to your side quests, if you were already tracking one, the order's all messed up. You have to, like, it's, bounce it's in, back and it's, forth. Yeah, it's in it's in numerical order, and it doesn't sort it based on completion. So you have to bounce back to the main quest, yeah. and then back over to the side quests, so that it filters out the ones that are completed at the bottom, and numerical order on top. Of the ones incomplete, and I still have the fucking Buizel quest, still have the fucking Cherum quest, because I can't find a fucking Cherum, and I They're can't get trees. a fucking Buizel. Yeah, I know that now, but they don't fucking tell you that. No, and th- They don't tell you that's... in the quest description, you have to attack some trees in order to find a Cherum. And I was looking online, and it's like, oh, you got, these specific trees are your best bet to get a Cherum, and I went to that place last night, there's no fucking shaking tree. Fuck you. No, that's, Fuck um... You. The, the one quest I have for the, the, the combies for the honey guy, um, he tells me to go to an island to get them. They apparently only spawn in the trees on that island. None of the fruit mm-hmm. trees are shaking. I have left the zone and come back to it four times. None of them have been shaking. Yeah. So I, I know exactly what you mean there. Um, and, 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 and like, I'm not trying to, the only side quest I'm going to complain about is Weasel, but I'm going to complain about the fact that, yeah, the, the side quests are vague. And I can't track more than one. I want to be able to go to an area, track all the side quests I have there, do them all, and then leave. I don't want to have to keep going into my map. Or that at least be able, to sort, be able to sort them by location so you can yeah. see everything. Because, like, even just the tracking also isn't great. Because aside from having to go to the map every time to see your progress, it won't always tell you, like, some quests put a marker on your map on where to go, like, to, yeah. to do the quests. Other quests put a marker on the person to turn it into. So yeah. it's not always clear. It's like, if you hadn't just talked to that person, you might think that you have to go to this, to like the town or something like that. When really that's just the person to turn the quest into. Talking to them is going to do absolutely fucking nothing yeah. for you. Yeah. Like, like, like the Buizel quest. It's still pointing at the person. Because I have caught a Buizel. The description for the quest is catch a Buizel. And once you catch your first Buizel... It checks that off, and now tells me to go to the person. You know what? Maybe, maybe make it easier for me to know that I finished the quest by only marking off that I caught a bigger weasel that's going to complete the quest. Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would be the right way. That's that's the other problem I have, and it comes to catching Pokemon. Um, And it's, I want a male Ralts, because I want a uh, Garmel, I believe is what it's called. Um... I want one of those. But there's no way to tell until you catch it, go back to the person that you can look at your Pokemon, and then look through your Pokemon to see if any of them are Exactly. Made. Exactly. Like, give me a little quick, like, summary, like, what Ralts female, or whatever, instead of me having to, like, be like, uh, maybe I'll catch 12 Ralts, and hope that one of them is what I need. Yeah. Like, I think because they don't give you the little, like, catch summary, because, and don't get me wrong, I actually love how seamless all that stuff is. I like that I can catch a Pokemon, I can throw a Pokeball, just keep running, 
and if it catches it, it catches it, and it just zips back to me, and, like, th- th- it's totally seamless. But they should have a way for you to at least look and see what Pokemon, like, what your Pokemon are in your boxes, even if you can't do anything with them. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just, absolutely, just... I shouldn't be able to change them out anywhere. I shouldn't be able to change, like, their moves on the fly. But, like, I should at least be able to see, like, oh, I have 40 fucking Bidoofs in my boxes. Yeah, so that... exactly. And, like, again, like, we're, it seems like these complaints are making the game, like, a game sucks. No, it's, it's, these are, like, with, in my opinion, with the exception of the side quest tracking, a lot of these are kind of minor complaints. They're, no, like, absolutely. They're very nitpicky. These are, like, this game has made so many good steps in the right direction for quality of life for Pokemon that they need to keep going with things like this. And with yeah. games like this. But, they need to fix these problems to make it a more complete game. Yeah. And so uh, I have two two last cons, and then I'm just going to run through my pros real quick. Um, The last two cons, they kind of go together. It's having to go back to the town every time before you can go mm-hmm. to another area. Like, not yeah. being able to just go from, like, one area to the next, having to, like, do that whole, like, roundabout thing. And not having a proper way to move quickly through the town. So, like, yeah, they have, the, like, those quick travel points. But, like, you run slow. You don't, and you also don't have an unlimited run. Like, your run doesn't last very long, and then when it's out, there's no gauge for it, but there's a, there's definitely a stamina gauge. Because if you hit run again right away, you run slow, and it only lasts for, like, 30 seconds. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, running around the town is just a bad experience after you spend a bunch of time out in the wild riding on, like, Windier. Or, yeah. uh, or on, um, the, the fish, where both of them have that, like, speed boost, and plus they charge, and it's, you can get from one end of the map to the other very quickly. And then it's like on the town, it's just like, oh, right, I'm a stupid human. I can't fucking move for shit. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm just bummed about that. Like, having to go back to the town and then not really being able to move around the town quickly. Um, mm-hmm. But good stuff. You haven't, you w- I don't think you would have gotten to this yet. But at a certain point, you're going to find apoms. The, the monkeys with the hands for their tails. Yeah. They don't, all depending on the area, they don't always alert to you. Um, so far, I don't think I've actually found any that alert to you. Like, they don't, they don't get a, a fucking question mark. They don't run away. They don't, um, attack you. They just act like curious fucking monkeys and they start following you. And it's the okay. coolest fucking thing. That's all. Awesome. Um, at one point, I was surrounded by like five fucking apoms just kind of like being goofy monkeys. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, uh, we talked a little bit about, about this. I really like the alphas. I think they're a fun challenge when you get to like a higher level and can actually like take them on seriously. And then they're in the early part of the game. It's just a fun thing to try to avoid. Like, cause you'll be running around and all of a sudden there's just a fucking alpha somewhere. And it's like, well, I need to go that direction. All of your, all of your non alpha friends are around you. You're in the middle. Like, how the fuck am I going to do this and not just get attacked by everybody? <laughs> or how am I going to catch all of the, like, there in one area, um, Parishu, I think it's what it's called. It's like the, the white and blue electric squirrel. Yeah. Um, there's an alpha one of them. And his whole area is surrounded by non-alpha ones of him. I'm like, oh man, I want all of these guys because I haven't seen them yet. They're going to fill up my Pokedex. This is great. But you have to like creep around there and catch all of him, all of them without fucking alerting the alpha to it. And like, I, 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 I caught him the other day, yesterday. Yeah. Like I'm talking, like I was like level like 10 when I was doing this. So like, yeah, I had no hope of fighting and, and catching that guy at the time. So like, I really like the alphas. Um, they're not always fun to fight. Um, and sometimes, like, they are way more challenging than you expect. And sometimes you're like, oh, I'm level 55. This will be fine now. And then, like, you go into the fight, and he, he's level 70. And you're like, well, fuck me. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you're uh, 15 I've... levels higher than me, and you're an alpha. You are just going to wreck me right now. I'm I'm getting get more and more into the habit of checking the Pokemon before I try to encounter them. Which, uh, another little minor gripe. Like, you have to be way too close to the Pokemon to be able to check them. That's why I don't do it, because by the time I get close enough to check them, especially if there's not, like, grass nearby, yeah. I'm, like, there is an Al- there is an Alpha Alakazam on the one map Um, that is way too fucking hard to take out. Um, And, like, there's just, there aren't a lot of good ways to approach him, because a- the the whole Abra family, super alert. Like, they, they fucking catch your movement from a mile away. It's yeah. really hard, and that whole area is also full of, um... Uh, Luxrays and the one, and Luxios. So, like, the, the yep. second and third form of the, the electric kitty thing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so like that whole area is just a landmine of Pokemon that want to fucking take your day to to like out. Yeah. Um. So like it's hard to sneak up on that Alexam to see what his level is. Um. And yeah, so I've just I've ninety percent of the time given up on that unless like I just get lucky. Usually I just throw a Pokemon and see what they because you can run like there there's nothing stopping you from running away. You don't even have to hit run. You can just run and eventually it'll say you've left. You've gone too far from the battle and your Pokemon will just return to you. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so alphas are great. Um. I really like the whole concept of what the world is right now. I like that people are kind of afraid of Pokemon. And that you're kind of one of the few people, one of the only people that, like, A, aren't afraid of them, and B, like, are actually able to use them effectively. Um, yeah, at least for, at I... least from the, from the Galaxy team. Like, the Diamond and Pearl clans, they're all about their Pokemon. Like, they're, like, best friends, they protect them, like, but, like, I, I like what they're doing with the narrative there. It's not just a world full of people that are using Pokemon. Um, some of the people are annoying with how afraid they are of it. Like, the lady that was afraid of the Starly, but... I... See, my problem with it, though, my problem with the narrative is that you're a time traveler. I really wish they didn't go that way. Like, if, if, if it was just you are new to the camp and they're tr- and, and you're, you're like, you volunteered to be here and whatnot, like, I would be a lot happier with, like, oh, you're one of the few that aren't, that are, that are good with Pokemon and whatnot. I don't but know, no, I like the Aseki the, thing. The reason you're good with Pokemon is because you came back in time. I'm assuming your character is from the Pokemon world and came back in time to an older Pokemon world. What if I told and you your character was from our world? I they're not gonna do. That. No, I know. I'm just fucking with you. Um, I know. Yeah, no. I, like, based on some text, I'm pretty sure they are from like the world of Pokemon that like we are used to from all of the games. Yeah. Um. But like, I like the whole like temporal vortex thing and like the Asekai nature of it. What I'm really curious about is what sort of car hit our protagonist that he got sent to another world? Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, that's how those things always go. You know, the kid gets hit by a truck while trying to save, like, another kid so they get reincarnated in another world. That's how that shit goes. I, I don't know, man. In Inuyasha, she just jumped down a well, so... That's true, but Inuyasha is, like, different because she can travel back and forth. Um, I mean, if he could go through the time we don't, drift, he could probably figure out how to get back. We don't know that, because, like, Arceus, Arceus, however you want to say it, was just like, alright, dude, I, this is me, I am you, get get down there, like, good luck, Here, I'm gonna fuck with your phone for a minute, you'll get it back, though. Yeah. Um. Then that, that's, that's the thing that makes me, like, laugh so much, is you've got these steam-powered Pokeballs, and, like, there's not a lot of computer technology, but everyone mentions your cell phone, like, it's nothing. Yeah, nobody bats a fucking eye at that weird thing. Um, and nobody is all that, like, concerned that you fell out of the sky either. Like, it is definitely a thing they talk about, but no, nobody's just like, yeah, no, we can't trust you, you fell out of the sky. They're just like, you need to fucking work or go die in the fields. We're not having a freeloader here whether you fell out of the sky or not. (laughs) I've, I've watched a few videos and there are theories that some of the char- some other characters are also time travelers from, like, other Pokemon games. And so maybe it's, like, not that uncommon, which is why they're just like, all right. We're used to it now, type of thing. So, I, I know more about the story. I just want to spoil anything for you. Um, because yeah. I have had some, like, interesting stuff revealed that's actually, I like. And I also like the fact that, I forget if we talked about it last week. I am 90% sure that, um, both of the clans keep calling, like, and I think it's pretty obvious. They're referring to their lord as Sinnoh. And the yeah. one thinks that Sinnoh is the lord of time, and the other one thinks he's the lord of space. When really they're both just worshiping Dalgia and Palkia, mm-hmm. um, but at a, there in one of the the zones there's like some ruins and there's definitely a um a, a toppled over statue of Dalgia and Palkia. Mm-hmm. So like they're known, they just to these two clans they're they are not two different Pokemon. They are one, but only one of them is real. Yeah. Um. It's, I I mean I I can't I I've seen videos about some of that stuff, so I can't I'm not gonna say to spoil it. With- yeah, so but, like, just... I, I like the world that they're building here. I like that if you if you open up, like, a map of Sinnoh from, like, Gold and Silver, or Gold and Silver, um, Diamond and Pearl, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's the same, it's... it's the same map. Um, You can, like, pinpoint everything on there, and, like, you can go find the three lakes, like, the, like, the, the, the that the lake spirits are at in the game. Yeah. Like, they're there, you can go explore them. One of them has a bunch of fucking Gyarados in it. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you don't, you can't go into the water yet, right? No, not yet. I think I'm gonna get that ability in the next area. Probably. I just, 
I have but yeah, like, like I, I ended as I finished with uh, uh, Lily, uh, the Lilligan, Lilligan, yeah, which I'm assuming is a variant of uh, Rosalie. No, no, it's a, it's a Lilligan. Well, I mean, what, what evolves into a Lilligan? Um, uh, Petalily. Petalily, I, I don't remember. It's a, it's a, it's there is a side quest to find a Pokemon with three leaves. Um, yeah. For for medicine, you need a Petalily for that quest. Petalily has always turned into Lilligant. This is a Hisuian version of Lilligant that is plant fighting. Um, so it's just it's it's a like a different variant. Um, the next two, so whereas Cleavor is actually like a new evolution of Scyther, um, the next couple are actually His Hisuian Hisuian, however you want to say it, variants of Pokemon. Okay. I, I thought maybe it was um like a new evolution like with Cleavor. So is also, there no Caesar in this game or is it is it just Cleavor? No, I believe you can get Caesar. So um when if have you spent much time in the temporal rift things when they open up? No, I've I haven't been able to get to one cuz it's always on the other side of the water. So pay attention to Oh, right. Shit. Um pay attention to like the the notifications for them too because you do have a lot of time between when they form and when they're active. So, like, you get the notification that one is forming, and it just puts the bubble up, but no Pokemon spawn yet. It's once it's actually, like, uh, like there is when the Pokemon spawn. But if you can find one that has tall grass, you can actually dart into it and crouch right away, and just sneak around catching the Pokemon as they randomly spawn, because they always spawn in, like, yeah. groups of five. And, like, I've caught a bunch of Porygon, I've caught a bunch of Eevee Evolutions, um, I got a, got a Steelix and a I almost had a Gengar. Um, the the fucking thing ended right before I was able to catch the Gengar. Um, but I think um, it will not even think in there. You also can find items from the future. So like, I think that's where you'll find things like the metal coat. Yeah, that will let you um, evolve Scyther. And then like, there are some other items like the, I was telling you before. There's a link cable item so that you can evolve the trade only Pokemon. Okay. Like it's called link cable. You give it to like a Machoke, uh... and it'll become a Machamp. So that's how I have to get the fucking Alakazam. Or you can catch the Alpha Alakazam. That's oh man, that's annoying. So you can right, find so those I'm, Yeah. Then I'm done then I'm done running around with the Kadabra. Uh, yeah, so okay. you can but go just, into um into the temporal rifts to find those items. Like some Pokemon will drop them if you beat them or catch them. Um and they're they also there are just random items that spawn on the ground sometimes. And then there's the lady in the town if you're heading towards the training zone. That she um she sells you stuff with merit that you use merit points the things you get for turning in the um the lost um backpacks on the map yeah um which make sure you're going in after you find those and claiming them in the menu or you don't get the yeah, points yeah. yeah um but she sells all of those items as well as all of the EV stones okay um and you also find EV stones just breaking the rocks and using Ursa Luna. Like, if you just, like, search with Ursaluna, he will dig up different evolution stones. Yeah, I mean, I found, um, uh, Water and Lightning, and I found where you evolve Eevee into, uh, because it's really close. It's it's at the beginning of the game, you turn, you evolve Eevee into, uh, Leafeon. Oh, I haven't so found that yet. It's at the, it's in the first area. I just must, um, I must have run by it a bunch of times and just never realized it. So, uh, when you are crossing the dam, going up towards the arena... On the right, instead of going up the path towards the arena, you turn right. Kind of near where the Scythers are? Uh, uh, the, uh, no. The Scythers are where the arena is. Um, oh, so you're talking so about, like, 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 way before the arena. Yeah, so, like, you start in the second, you start in the second camp, and you go down the mountain towards, heading towards the arena, where the, um, where the Alpha Bill Barrel is. That's, oh, uh, okay, that's, yeah, I know exactly where you're talking. That's, that's a dam. That's, like, the something dam. I don't remember what it's called. I, I remember that, what you're talking about now. But you, you take a right, and there is a rock there that if you go, um, investigate the rock, it says something about strange grass powers or something like that. It's, it's where oh. you would evolve Leafy. Yeah, I totally I have, missed that. I have not been able to get an Eevee yet. I've only seen, like, two Eevees my entire playthrough, and they've ran away from me both times. I've caught a couple Eevees. I, I have one that I evolved into Umbreon, because I really like Umbreon, um, and that's that's in my party. Um, but then, like, in the temporal things, just fucking Eevee spawn. I also, so, weirdest thing, I caught a Magnemite in one of the temporal things. There is then a fucking Magneton just flying around in one of the zones. Mm -hmm. Like, and he's always there, because it took me a while to catch him, because 
I kept running out of the 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 feather balls because it's very hard to throw those things and hit a moving target, especially yeah. a small one like a magneton or not magneton the the final one, the one that looks like a little spaceship. Oh, uh, mag mag magcentric or something. Yeah, whatever whatever it's called. Um, one of those is just in the Hisuian region. That's weird. Yeah, it is. It's very weird. Um, but we can probably wrap up Pokemon. Like we yeah. were, like it is actually a very fun game. Like all all the bitching aside, um. Like I said, the Sinnoh map is really cool to see in, like, the old times. And once you get the water Pokemon and the the climbing Pokemon you'll get after that one, um, it changes the whole game. Like, exploring and traversal becomes, like, a totally different thing. And it's so much more fun just, like, going back to the other zones and exploring again. Yeah. Yeah, I I I want to I I want to try to streamline through a lot of the stuff and I've been saying as I play like I'm not going to I'm not going to focus too much on exploration. Yeah, right. Um Yeah, no, I like, like I said I, at, at, sorry, at go ahead. this point at this point I'm at the point where I'm like uh especially now that realizing that like I need the link cable in order to uh evolve Kadabra to Alakazam, I'm like, all right, well, I want a Mal Ralts so I can get Gar Garmol or whatever it is. Um I'll check and my Raltz's. If I have one, I can trade it to you. I, look, I know where Raltz is. I've only seen, I've only caught two. And, and the last time I remembered where they were, it was like turning into daytime. So I only had a little bit of time to try to catch one. I just got to go and try catching them again. Oh, are they, are um, they only out at night? It seems, it seems like they're only out at night. And during the day, it's Rosalie instead of. Oh, are there Rosalie's over there? Fuck. I didn't realize yeah. that. That yeah. would have been. I kept, so I, I found like this one patch where like one Rosalie would spawn. So I just kept going back there and catching them over and over again to fill out the Pokedex. I, I, I did that, um, by the Alpha Rosade, or Rosada. Oh, uh, Roserade. Roserade, that's it, yeah. I, uh, up near the arena for Lilligant, like there's. I found alpha... that, yeah, I found that one after I completed the Rosalie, um, mm -hmm. Pokedex, because there was a quest to, like, complete it and show somebody. Yeah. Um, um, but... But yeah, let's let's move on. I'm gonna... I'll talk about all the stuff I watched next week, because um, we're going along. Talk about Ori in the Blind Forest. It's a few years old, but you're just getting to it for the first time. It's... Yeah, it's a few years old, uh, and it's because I... I after taking uh, my uh, hiatus from my normal schedule just to play Pokemon all that, um... I decided to go back to Metroidvania Mondays, and I, I decided to do Orient of Life Forest, because I've always been told good things. Cobb, I believe you've played it, and Eric had played it recently. It's such a it's good a, game. It's available on Games Pass. It is such a good game. It is beautiful, man. It is beautiful. It plays very well on the Switch, too. It, it, it play, it play, I, I have it on Game Pass. It plays great on the PC. Um, but, like, just the art style alone, where everything looks, like, hand-painted, even, like, the characters and the, the models, and, like, the, the combat system, like, is a little, it can be a little dull with, like, the, uh, just, you just, you don't really have to aim or anything, it just, it'll shoot automatically, or it'll aim it on its own, but, like, it, I, it works for, for the kind of game that it is. It's not really a game set to focus too much on combat. Yeah, it's, it's platforming on, and exploration. Yeah, it's platforming and exploration, and I just, I need to, I just want to talk about the, the art style and the art direction they went with that game. The music is also very good. Oh, the music is fucking fantastic. It is, it's it's like, overall, like, it, I, I was saying while I was on stream, like, I am mad it took me this long to play this game. Like, I, it, it is, it is... I believe I have Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Willow Wisp on my Steam wish list that like if it ever gets taken off of Game Pass and it's on a good sale on on stream and Steam, even if I've already beaten them, I'll probably buy them because they're just they're they're, they're they seem like that that good of a game. Yeah, and I haven't I'm, I haven't played w Will of the Wisp yet, but I I bought Blind Forest twice. I have it on the Xbox and on Switch. Yeah. I'm uh probably about three ish hours in, a little over three hours in, and I've gotten the ability to do the dash while like the the counter dash when if like you can dash through an enemy or through an enemy's attack or whatever. Um, and the 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 double jump, and I've got a couple of abilities, and like the one thing I have to remember is the save points, is the checkpoints. Yeah, it's it that is that is something that I kept forgetting, and so I would be doing puzzles, puzzle areas and whatnot and not p dropping a checkpoint at, a, at certain points. 
and then I'd have to redo it all. And like I that happened three or four times, and so I'd be like, you know, I should probably drop a checkpoint here. Um, there was one point I, that I played for probably a good like twenty minutes exploring and and getting a bunch of things, and I died for some reason. I don't remember what happened and how I died, but I died, and it brings me all the way back to where I was before, and I lost everything. I'm like, shit. All right, well. I know, I remember everything that I got and how I got it all. So it's not going to be hard to get everything again, but I have to go back and do it. So I had to take another, like, five or so minutes to go back and do everything that I'd already done. Um, instead of, like, the 20 minutes of trying to figure it out. But it's still, like, it, it just, it's such a fluid game, nice fluid motions. And, and again, the animations and how, like, Ori jumps around and flips around and stuff, how he controls and... Like, the, the the background art style, the foreground art style, the music. It's just, it is such... Oh, man, I was I just gush over this game so much. I want to see more games with, like, similar art styles and, and play styles. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of fun. And I know, like, when we were talking, like, a week or two ago, um, like, I was I, I had mentioned that, like, I'm just not into Metroidvanias. Mm-hmm. Ori is about the only other one other than, like, just Metroid that, like, I really, like, fell into. And I think it's because it, it was more platforming and exploration than combat focused. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can't do certain things until you go get, like, the ability to do it. But it's not so much a go through this whole level, get blocked by a thing, go back, find the item, go back and do that thing again like Metroid games usually are. Yeah. It was more of just a, oh, yeah, just explore this whole level. At the end of it, you'll get, like, a, a, a new ability. And then, like, yeah. you can move on to the next area. And, like, yeah. sometimes if you're lucky, you might act. I luck I I say lucky loosely. You might accidentally manage to like stumble into an area that you're just not meant for yet. Like maybe you see a thing and you're like I can get over there if I double jump, if I time to jump right. And like you do it and then you're like, "Oh, no, I shouldn't be here." And then you have yeah. to figure out how the fuck to get back. <laughs> yeah, I I mean I stumbled into an area that um like it was just too dark at one point and I was like, "I should start exploring. I should go in here." But I just after a while I'm like it's too dark back here. I'm sure there's a way to make it brighter. I'm sure I'm hoping that there's a way to make it brighter, and it's not always that dark. Uh, oh, I remember but, that part. And, yeah, th- there's a thing about that area, if it's the area I'm thinking of. And then there was, uh, I was exploring going to the water temple, like the tree that you have to climb up. Is that the um, one that you have to race out of as, like, the water's yeah. filling up behind you? That thing, yeah. That bit that was, took me several tries. Oh, it I took just me couldn't. a bunch of tries, but it was so fun to do. Like, And that's, yeah. that's a thing that, like, Ori does really well and it's the same with how hollow knight did it like i'm not good at platformers i find platforming very frustrating sometimes like you've seen me play uh uh Mar- super mario uh world like i'm not good at that stuff but ori and and hollow knight like they make the platforming feel satisfying when you actually do it right uh, and it's just uh, like it's it's just it's so smooth and fluid and like it, it it feels good to like succeed and it and you really want to push yourself to try again if you fail. Um and it's just like yeah, I I love I love that game. I'll be playing it again on Monday. Uh I don't know really know how long it takes to beat. I'm hoping to try to at least it's get like through eight the win to ten time. hours. Yeah, I'm 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 assuming it's gonna take me probably like three playthroughs. Um with attempts of gathering everything while I'm playing through it, so uh, like, there's three temples. There's the wind, water, there's water, wind, and fire. So I'm assuming the next time I play, I'll probably get to wind, because that's where they're telling me to go to next. Then after that, I'll go to fire, and then after that, I'll probably go to the end of the game. Um, so it's probably like three or four, two or three more playthroughs, but, or, or play sessions. But it's just like, it's such a good game, and I'm, I'm, I, I want to get into, I want to play it and beat it, so I can play Will of the Wisps, because I hear they did a lot more with that, and it feels, it's like, the 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 exploration and 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 platforming stuff feels even better in Will of the Wisps. Than yeah, I I need to get around parts. to playing Will of the Wisps. Well, wait a couple of weeks and maybe we can play it together. Eh. No, I mean I I'm I'm gonna finish. Like I said, I want to finish Pokemon. Um, I might that might be like my like side game. Like I might start playing Xenoblade while and like have that one as like the the one that you don't have to like pay attention to like the narrative so to speak. Yeah. Like, you can just kind of like load it up and just run through it, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, with, or, Ori is a very good game. It like great sound, great visuals, controls really well. Yeah, yeah, just just a masterclass in how to make and, th- that sort of game. 
And, like, something you had said where it's, like, you, you don't stumble into an area where you're, like, oh, I'm just not strong enough or whatever. Like, I, I did at one point. I went into the fire area, to the fire uh, uh, mountain by accident, just exploring. And I was, like, oh, I'm too weak for this area, obviously. But it's not like I don't have the abilities to get through this area. And generally, like, having the abilities aren't needed to fight the enemies, the abilities are really for all the collectibles more than anything else. Yeah, and for, like, making traversal easier, because generally you can yeah. find a way through a thing, but once you get an ability, it becomes much easier to get through that thing. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, but yeah, I, that's just, that's that's really all I had to say about Ori. It's just, it's such a beautiful game. If you have not played Ori, I urge everyone, if you have not played Ori, come join me on Monday, twitch.tv slash be underscore walnuts. For my affiliate streams, because I am now affiliated with Twitch. Um, yeah, I tried to Mondays. watch your. I tried to watch a few minutes of your stream, but I got a thirty second ad and I just pieced out. I mean, that's that. You're a jerk. <laughs> um, I, I kind of have to have ads. You know, I think you do. No, I, I mean, I don't. I don't. You don't actually. You can turn off ads. But like, you're but, honestly like everybody has them on. Like, if you're trying yeah, to make any I, sort of like income off of it at all, like you, you need no, to have them running. No. I mean, yeah, if I want to make income on them, I need to have them running more than what I have them running. Uh, but I really only have like a minute and 30 second ads before you jump in and that's it. Um, I don't run ads midstream. At, at least right now I don't. Uh, cause they, like, I've, I've talked with some people and they're like, some, they tend to come at bad times. Like, I was watching one person who, uh, they were playing God of War and they were near the end section where they're in the room teleporting between the realms. Um, and, like, he had to pause his game, because he's like, guys, I pushed back this ad three times. It won't let me push back anymore. We're going to take a quick ad break. I'll be right back. And so he had to pause his game, because he didn't want people to miss out what he was doing. Because it's like, it's a big part, because it was getting up to the fight with Balder um, and Freya. Right? That was his name, Balder? No. What's his name? Yeah, Balder. It is Balder, right? Yeah. It was getting up to the final fight with him and him, with Balder and Freya. And so he's like, I don't want you guys to miss anything. And so it's like, right now I'm, I, I might think about doing like maybe you, the minimum you can separate out or the maximum you can have your ads separated is every hour. If I could do like every hour and a half for a minute 30, I'd be fine with that. But no, it's once an hour. Tend to stream for three hours, but it's also, your ad revenue is, um, uh, from what I've read, excuse me, from what I've read, like, you get like $3.50 per million ad views or something like that. Yeah, you don't get a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've, I've, I've made more money getting five subscribers over the last two streams than I did with my ad revenue over the last two. Okay, then. <laughs> four, four, four subscribers? Four or five subscribers. I can't, I think it's five, actually. No, it's five. It's five. Anthony accidentally subscribed twice. Um, Damn. Well, he, he subscribed himself, and then he wanted to gift me a subscription. He didn't realize what it meant. So he wanted to gift the subscription to me, not really realizing that I'm already subscribed to my channel. So he gifted a month to a follower of my channel. And oh, then that was subscribed nice some, Yeah, he was trying to give it to me, but he ended up giving it to somebody else. And then subscribed himself, and then afterwards was like, bro, did you use your Twitch Prime? And he's like, fuck! So it's all right. Just cancel your uh, cancel your auto uh, repay, and then next month use Twitch Prime. So, oh man, so he subscribed with real money, and then realized he could have done it with Twitch. He he subscribed twice with real money, and then realized he could have done it with Twitch Prime. Well, that was still. I mean, it was only ten bucks, so Not that even. was nice. I think, it's like, I think it's like six to eight bucks. I, I don't think my subscriptions are that much. I thought they were. I thought all subscriptions were just four ninety nine. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I, unless I see a lot of people's that are like three ninety nine, but they're also it's it generally says like twenty percent off. So oh, I actually, don't know if mine's off. Yours says twenty percent off right now. Yeah, so I think everyone, I think it's all, always says twenty percent off. Uh, you can't. I don't think you can set subscription fees. Or subscription no, like prices. yours. So apparently, it is twenty percent off for like the first month. Um, but tier one only renews monthly at four ninety nine. Okay. So right yeah, now, so I could. I could, I could subscribe for $4 right now, and then it will renew for $5 after that. Um, yeah. And I'll, or I can do like multiple months at a time and it, it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. But you, be, I guess, be, I don't know whether it's because you're affiliate 
or because you're new, but like at some point there are like different tier options also. Uh, what like subscription tier options? Yeah, like like you can like subscribe for more money and you get more like Twitch perks. There's there's that you can you can be a second and third level uh, subscriber. I don't have any any perks for any of that yet because I don't have any emotes except for the one uh one quest emote. So if you uh, want to uh come subscribe to twitch.tv slash b underscore walnuts, you get uh the little one quest man face um uh uh to your um added to your emote list. I have made four cents on ad revenue. Hey man, that's four cents you didn't have before. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've made uh two, four, six, eight uh well I've made eleven dollars and fifty three cents. I don't know what I was trying to add instead of subtract the four cents to my total money. I made eleven dollars and fifty three cents in 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 total Prime subscription or hey, man. Uh, subs. That's that's a a lunch somewhere. It's like yeah. a fast food lunch. Look, I mean, at this rate, in uh ten months, I can cash out. There you go. Look on the bright side. <laughs> um, I can cash out for playing video games. But anything else you want to say about Ori? No, no, that's 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 pretty much it. Uh, it's just it's such a beautiful game. I yeah, I love it. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, it it is a very good game. Um, so next week I will uh say some stuff about the things I watched. Um, they're 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 good things, so it won't Depen- be a bummer to talk depend- about. Depending on time. Yeah. No. Exactly. I'm, no. I'm I, 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 I back like three or four weeks. Yeah. No. I I will put these at the top of the outline next week. Um. Unlike whatever that game is that you played that we kept orcs must die. I'm no, not gonna push. I, the- <laughs> I, will, I will move it down, bitch. I will move um, it down. I will get. I'm. I'm. I am probably getting myself a new game this week. This weekend because I worked so much last week. Um. So you, you're gonna get Sifu? Sifu. I might. I might. Apparently, Maybe. that game is apparently brutal. Uh, yeah, I've, I've watched a lot of videos on it and a lot of, like, uh, things to learn and, and, like, uh, the first, like, like, uh, what you should know before you buy it type of things. And it, it is, it's super brutal. It's super, like, you need, you need to do things multiple times. Yeah. Um, cause and- if you, if you go through your first level and you, you're 70 years old, you're 70 at your second level. And you die and get game over immediately. So you need to redo your first level as many t- and like to like not die as much. And yeah, you basically have to get better at at each level so that you can complete it at a yeah. younger age, so that you start the following level at that age and not as an old yeah. man where you're but, close like, to death. The, the the progression system is really cool because every time you die, you can buy upgrades and like if you buy an upgrade six times, then you hold on to that whether you revert back to your young age or not um if you uh if you unlock things in a level even when you restart it those things are unlocked so you don't have to go through the entire level you can there are like sequence breaks essentially for certain levels as well so like i think like i was hearing the third or fourth level you can bypass pretty much the entire level after the initial part once you beat it the first time yeah that's that game seems like it could be neat, but a little too much for me. Yeah. Um, one one quick thing, um, that just, like a recommendation for you. Um, uh-huh. did you ever? Wa- I forget. Did you ever watch any of Titans? I did. I never. I never finished, but I I did watch Titans. Okay, so you know the guy that played Hulk? Yeah. He is in a new show on Amazon called Reacher. It's the the Jack Reacher it's character the, yeah. that Tom Cruise played. Yeah. Um, it. We watched the first two episodes last night. It is actually a really good show, and he's really good in the role. It is not the Tom Cruise movies at all. Like, yeah. he beats a couple guys up a few times, but he's more just like a... He is a detective more than anything. And, like, uh-huh. he is basically, like, trying to figure out, like, who is murdering people in this, like, small town in Atlanta that he just, like, stumbled upon because he's a fucking hobo. Like, that's what... He calls himself a hobo. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty good. And, um... Unlike most things on Amazon, they actually just dropped the full like eight episode season all at once. I'll 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 look into it. I'll have to check it out. Um, speaking of Amazon, I'm super happy that it's three episodes at a time with Legends of Vox Machina. Yeah, it's a, though it's a bummer that it'll it'll be over quicker. Yeah, but it's also but it's still like the way they're doing it and making each three like their own small arc. It just it kind of works better that way. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to t- circle back and talk about it um after like the full season's done. Yeah, which will be in two weeks. There's only twelve episodes, and there was uh, one other thing that I wanted to quickly say as you were talking about Titans. Um, and oh, there's a there's a Ben Stiller movie on a- or show on it might be a movie on Apple TV that looks weird as shit. It's called um Hench Henshin. No. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. But it's like, it's a show where, like, you go to work, and once you get to work, you forget your every day-to-day life. But you remember what you do for work. And once you leave work, you forget what you do for work, but you have your personal life back. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, what is, what is it called? It's gonna bother me if I don't tell you guys what it's called. Severance. Severance. Yeah, I I just, I just found it too. Mm -hmm. You, You said it before I could get it out. Yeah, so, um, it's, well, I did not want a video. Uh, Mark Scott leads a team of Lumen Industri- Industries. Employees have undergone a severance procedure, which sur- surgically divides their memories between their work and personal. Um, it just, it, it looks really cool. I, I, I saw it on ads watching some of the CW shows, and it's got, uh, Ben from, uh, Parks and Rec. Adam yeah, Scott. I was gonna say, it looks like Adam Scott is the main person. Yeah. Um, John Turturro, who, he's, He's been in all sorts of stuff. He he was the butler in Mr. Deeds and the FBI guy in the shitty Shia LaBeouf Transformer movie. Yeah. Um, I think he, he continued on with them, and, like, he was Chris, always fun in them. Christopher Walken's in it. That's all you need. Yeah, there you That's go. That's all you need. Yeah, so it looks like um Ben Stiller directed it, or some of yeah. it is not in it. He might, like, he might yeah. cameo, but he's not, like, a, an actor yeah, I, in it. Yeah, I knew he wasn't in it. I, I knew he'd had something to do with it. I guess it's a, a movie... But if you guys have, uh, oh no, it's a series according to Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, but if you guys have Apple Plus, check it out and let us know what it's like. Uh, let me know if it's worthwhile to, I, I don't know if Apple Plus has, um, oh, what's it called? Like a, a trial a trial or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm still mad sure at myself they... for missing like the free year with PlayStation. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they do. And it looks like, um, the show starts airing on the 18th and runs until April 8th. So I might like, I might just get a month of Apple TV and watch it at the end of April, or I might wait until um, Ted Lasso's back and, like, watch it between Ted Lasso episodes. Yeah. I'll, prob- I'll probably do the uh, Severance and Ted Lasso when Severance is over and just get it all done in a month or whatever they have yeah. a free trial of. But that's yeah, it. Seems like, that seems like a good idea. Uh, but with that, I think that is going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, next week, we are going to... or not? No, I'm sorry. In two weeks, we will have our next book club, which is going to be Fantastic Four... The 2015 version. Um, you can find that on Disney Plus. So that will be on the episode that goes live on February 24th. Uh, but other than that, you can, uh, find more of our content over at www.one-quest.com. You can also help us out by supporting us at patreon.com slash onequest. If you can't support us there with your dollars, you can go to your favorite podcast platform. Um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, all the fun places. Rate us, review us, subscribe to us. Those things all help a whole lot. Uh, you can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline or at one underscore quest on Twitter and Instagram. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash onequestvideo, and you can always send us an email to social at one-quest.com. Otherwise, we'll be back next week with more stuff to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you.